I don't want everybody to agree with me. I just want you to listen to what I'm saying and think for yourself. Right. I don't give a if you think I'm bullshit. Do the research. Stop letting these people tell you what to think. have a conversation with Jill Scott? I tried. Oh, you I tried, tried okay. to make this because we share a we share people in common. Mm -hmm. And I said, look, this is whack. You know, graduations are going to be coming up. The both of us are going to want to be invited. She never responded. So I'm going to say this. I'm going to take the time to say this right now. Listen, Jill. I done said horrible things about you online. You done said horrible things about me behind my back, which is why I said them about you online. So you ain't got to hear it from somebody else that I said something about you. I wanted to be very clear. I want everybody to know the things I say about you. Look, you done, we getting old, bitch. Like, you know, you a hoe. And we ain't never got to be the best of friends. I'll never trust you again. But we can bury the hatchet and we can try to find some. You know, it's so uncomfortable for your baby daddy. You know, because I love John. You know, and I was fucking John before you, and you knew it. You knew I was fucking John. So did you know, she steal your man, basically? No, not really. How it happened was, okay. me and my ex-husband were getting separated, but we were mm -hmm. still married. And John and I, we had known each other for a long time, and we had a moment, and it was dope. And we were enjoying each other's company, but he didn't want no drama because I was still married. And Jill knew that, so she slid in. And she do like she do with everybody else's man. She offers them a job and then they come and work for her and she hired him as the drummer. And then the next thing I know, they had matching on tattoos behind each other. Ear, and, and he showed up to my New Year's Eve show apologizing to me. Um, you know, that he moved on. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, she ain't the bitch you think she is, but I wish y'all the best. Mm. And I think he figured it out. Like when he finally went through the um, medicine cabinet and realized she had been taking all the fertility drugs to get pregnant and he didn't know. You know, first she tried to have the baby with the African prince when she was doing that detective shit. But I think the family found out she was a hoe, you know, and they just wasn't feeling it. Mm. So she locked John down. And then when the shit went wrong, you know, because at that time he was the musical director on the Monique show. Oh, but then she tried to turn everybody against him after they split up. Mm. Tried to stop him from working. So she was and vindictive. She, oh no, she's always been vindictive. I never heard fixed sense when her and Lizelle split up because that's when she had first really started trying to have a baby like after Lizelle realized she was fucking everybody and it was just time to move on. Mm -hmm. And so she wanted to have a baby real bad and that's when she started doing the IVF and I was like, yo, I'll hold your hand through every session. I was like, I promise you, you're going to have a child one day. And I'm going to be there. We're going to have it. I was like, it's going to work out. It's going to work out. But she was just doing Lizelle. You know, she had done too much. Right. And Lizelle was just over it. And she was, she was just dishonest with him. And so they had gotten into an argument one day. And she was talking about, well, what about a baby? I think if we had a baby, it would make the marriage better. He said, what the fuck makes you think that I would let you have my, that I would let you have my child? I've seen the way you treat your pets. Mm. He said, bitch, I never let you have my kid. When your husband tells you you ain't fit to take care of his child because you, you barely fit to take care of an animal, that says a lot. Wow. You're right about that. That does say a lot. And then they got divorced after that. And then the story that she used to make him fall in love with her, turns out it was all a lie. Rich Medina was never into you, Jill. You told everybody that you was with Rich Medina and he he broke fly on you and then you ran off with his best friend and got, because see, Rich Medina and Lizelle was best friends. They was both DJs. Mm -hmm. They were two of the hottest house and club DJs in the city. So she was into Rich, but Rich wasn't into her. So mm -hmm. she started fucking his best friend Lizelle to get back at him. All that time he thought that they had this secret love affair that was just so beautiful. Rich never gave no fuck. I talked to Rich. I told Rich. Rich was like, huh? She told you what? I said, she said y'all was in love and then you cheated on her. He said, I laid dick to her two, three times, Jack. 
He said it was never serious. He said I was happy when she got with Liza so she could stop fucking bothering me. I'm like, I'll be damned. Because she had me convinced. She had this whole revenge plot for a nigga that ain't even get no fuck. So you were very supportive of her. Like it was like that was your friend. You was believing everything that your friend was I saying. I whipped anybody's ass for her. You know what the kind of childhood that she had? I had sympathy. You know, see, she grew up in a very complicated home. See, her mother's a whore. Not and her the grandma. Mama. What? You said the mama was a whore. Yeah, <laughs> her mama was a whore. In Philly, know she fucked her mom. Fucked everybody. And Blue Bay. Her grandma tried to hold their asses together with the Jehovah's Witness stuff, but it just didn't take. Like her mom, okay, all right, understand this. It's complicated. Jill's mother was married to Mr. Scott. And mm -hmm. Jill had a godfather who was Mr. Scott's best friend. Mm -hmm. Jill found out when she was like 10, 11 years old that her godfather was her biological father and Mr. Scott wasn't her daddy. So when Mr. Scott finally found out, that Jill wasn't his baby because I guess she started looking more like his best friend. And mm -hmm. so her mom had to break it down. And Mr. Scott was like, fuck you and fuck your baby. And I'm out. And left? Yeah, he left. And so then she was looking for another husband. So she just started fucking everybody again. You would have thought that after all of that, she would have went to be with the godfather. So Jill could have a real father around more. But apparently she was over that dick and she was on to the next. And so she would go out on these dates when Jill was in like junior high and high school and she would come home at two, three o'clock in the morning and tell her all about her sexual escapades. Mm. And be like, this is how you got to suck a dick and this is how you Wait, get your dick to Basically, what? Like Jill's not a whore because she wanted to be. Her mother programmed her mind. So I was always very loving, very loving and always very forgiving because you were raised by a whore. And when you raised by a whore, it's fair to say that your ideas about sex and love might be a little off. Mm -hmm. That's why I can say and say, Jill, I forgive you for every wrong thing you've ever done for me and done to me. And I hope you can forgive me even now for being honest with, you know, your slutty, you know. I don't think she's going to forgive your you know? <laughs> No, but I'm saying this because I want people to understand why she becomes so sexualized. In her work. Because mm -hmm. a lot of people say to me, her music changed after y'all stopped being friends, Jag. And it has. It's mm. sex this, sex that, and sex this, and sex that, and sex this. Like Crown Royal, uh, Crown Royal. Well, on I, you don't care. I like that song. Yeah, I mean, if you if you into the slut, it's the perfect. But we all I ain't gonna lie. In us. I ain't gonna lie. I done laid a nigga or two down on that track because that track is cold. It, it is. <laughs> it's cold. But that's all she seemed to do anymore. She don't really talk about relationships no more. Mm. So she you don't like really Jill when it was more like uh, uh I like Jill, I like Jill when I was influencing her music. Mm. We stopped being friends after Beautifully Human. My influence on her work ended at Beautifully Human. Go mm. back, listen. Me without her, it's just it's just sex. I never really paid attention to it. Now, now you're going to have me looking at her discography, trying to check it out now. The full interview will be in the description of this video. If you want more Jaguar right, make sure you guys check out DalladelphiaTVNetwork.com. Again, DalladelphiaTVNetwork.com. And remember, the views expressed in this video reflect on Jaguar right. Don't sue me, Jill. Sue her. I'm just kidding, y'all. All right, make sure y'all hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell so you get all updates. All right, deuces, everybody. Mm -hmm.